Hey, what's going on guys? It's Cousin Chat here, and today I'm gonna show you how to play PS2 games on PC with a PCS2 emulator, its PC requirements, and the best settings for either low-end PCs and high-end PCs too, such as 4K gaming. The links will be in the description. So, are you ready? Alright, I'm gonna start by telling you the requirements. For the minimum, you need one of these operating systems. Windows 7, 8 or 10 can be 32 bits or 64 bits. Ubuntu 18.0 or newer in Arch Linux or other distro can be 32 bits or 64. 4 GB of RAM. For the CPU, it needs to have two physical cores with hyper-threading and the benchmark score of 1600 for your CPU model in this web page. For your GPU, it needs to have Direct 3D10 and OpenGL 3.0 support, 2GB of dedicated video memory, and the benchmark score of 3000 for your GPU model in this web page. If your computer is less powerful than this, you can still play in it, if the games you are trying to play have simple graphics. Now, as for the recommended requirements, you need to have one of these operating systems. Windows 10, 64 bits, Ubuntu 19.0 or newer, and Arch Linux or other distro, 64 bits, 8GB of RAM, and for your CPU, it needs to have 4 physical cores with or without hyper-threading, and the benchmark score near or more than 2100. As for the GPU, it needs to have Direct 3D11 and OpenGL 4.5 support, 4GB of dedicated video memory, and the benchmark score must be 6000 for 1080p gaming and 12000 for 4K gaming. Alright, let's start. Let's go to this page. Here you have two options, the installable one and the portable one. If you decide to use the portable one, you need to download the Visual C++ 2015-2019, right here. I go with the installable one, which is this one. Let's download and install it. Choose normal installation, then next. Here if you want to change the path for the installation, then install. Alright, here if you want to change the language, you can select it. If not, click next. In this window, you need to change just one thing, right here, in GS. Just pick the one that says SSE4. This will improve the performance when you use the video plugin in hardware mode. Click next. So now, you need to copy your BIOS files in the BIOS folder, which is located in Documents, PCSX2, BIOS. Once done, click Refresh. You must know that you can use any BIOS and you will be able to play any kind of game. For example, you can use the US BIOS and you can play Paul games and Japanese games. Once done, click Finish. Let's begin. You can remove this by clicking Mess and unchecking Show Console. If you're going to play in a big screen, click System and enable this option. 
white screen patches. Then config, emulator settings, GS window, aspect ratio, white screen. Then apply. With those options, your games will not stretch themselves. They will fit the screen with the game's content. You can enable this option B-Sync by clicking here, then Adaptive. With that option on, you will reduce the screen glitch, known as tearing. Alright, in the Speak Hack tab, if your CPU have 3 cores or more, you can enable this option and you will gain some performance boost. But remember something, there are games that will break if you have this option on. Lastly, we have the presets, right here. In case you see the game not running fast enough, you can increase the level here to another one. But remember this might break some games. You can use level 3 as your default. Once done, click apply and OK. Now remember this. If you play Euro games, known as Paul, they will not run at 60 FPS. They are locked at 50 FPS. So, if possible, only use US games known as NTSC or Japanese games. Both can run at 60 FPS. Alright, let's go to config. Video. Plugin settings. In renderer, you have two options. OpenGL and Direct 3D. Only use hardware move, because software move is very slow. I will make a video with some games showing how they perform using OpenGL and Direct3D. In interlacing, leave it in automatic. In texture filtering, by linear PS2. In internal resolution, if your computer is not powerful enough, leave it in native. But if your computer is powerful enough, choose 3x native for 1080p and CX native for 4K. In an isotrophic filtering, choose 16x. That will make the models a bit more smooth in the edges. Once done, hit OK. Now config, audio, plugin settings. Here you can increase the performance by choosing a lower number here in interpolation, such as level 1. And by marking this option that says Disable Effects Processing. But even for high end pieces, you can choose either number 3 or 4. 3 is OK. Then hit OK. Now let's configure our controllers. Go to Config, Controllers, Plugin Settings. In Pad 1 is your first controller. In Pad 2, is in case you have a second controller. You can either use the quick setup or do it one by one. Once done, hit apply and OK. Alright, now let's locate our gains. Go to CDVD, then ISO selector, and browse. Search for your games. And once you select your games, they will appear here, down below, browse. So you can pick any of them without having to browse again. Then boot ISO. You have two options, full and fast. If you choose fast, it will skip the original intro of the PS2. If you choose full, he will play it.
In case you want to go to the original PS2 console menu, just click here in CDVD, then No Disk, and System Boot BIOS. And by the way, this option that says enable cheats is in case you want to use cheats in the emulator. I'm going to leave a link in the description of a guide showing how in case you are interested in that. Also you can play with net support which I'm going to leave a link to that too in the description. So about the memory cards, by default you have two and each one has 8 megabytes maximum. But you can modify that too by going in config, memory cards, click somewhere, then create. Here you can change the name of the memory card, and here you can increase the size. It is not recommended to go higher than 32 because it will break some games. You have some risk using 16 or 32, but the bigger the size is, the higher the risk is. You can go with 8 megabytes or 16, maximum 32, no more. You can eject them and swap them in-game, which means you don't need to close the game to change the memory cards. And finally, you can simulate the old TV looks in-game. So let's go open again to show you. By pressing F7. That's pretty much it for now. I hope you enjoyed your gaming sessions. If you found this video useful, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. Also, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.